I think as a teacher and then also just as a general citizen of South Africa, I think it's so important um, to equip our kids, you know, um, with these skills. And so when I look back at, you know, my high school career, I wish I took these things more seriously. Yeah. But at the same time, I guess that is where we also see the gap in our education system where we are not empowering um, our kids to, to, you know, make purchases on, mm. on homes and things like that. Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Class, and I have exciting news for you. But before I get to that, as you know, Private Property brings you amazing content every night this week. We have Zamantungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. Amazing guests coming to you, talking technicalities, what it is that you need to apply for a home loan. All the questions you have, we we'll answer them right there. And exciting news, Chad Vavuros with the Home Shopper Show every Monday and Friday night at 8 p.m. Chad Vavuros has just been around Cape Town. I'm talking Paul, French Hook, Cams Bay, Clifton, everything you need to see right there on the Home Shopper Show. And last but not least, the Farming Podcast, everything you need to know about agriculture. Do you have those green fingers? Well, Mbali comes to you every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And tonight, I'm sitting with the absolutely amazing Sherith Whaley, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely correct. <laughs> I got it right this time. Sherith Whaley, all the way from Cape Town. We're sitting on this amazing wine farm, Saxonburg. On your way to Stellenbosch, do pop in here. Absolutely amazing. The food is great. The wine is great. And uh, tonight we're talking about how Sherith went on her journey to buy her first home. Everything, the mistakes she made, the lessons she learned, everything she went through, the ups and the downs. All the information you need right here. Good evening, Sherith. How are you? Good evening, everybody. Um, um, thank you so much for having me. Thank I'm you. doing well. How are you? I can't complain. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I mean, as you know, I, you've watched all of our shows, that private property mm -hmm. show. You know, I mean, from farming you spoke about, to right. the home shopper, to the normal podcast. And this is a question I've never asked, but I, I feel like I need to ask you this question because I feel like we're in a very similar boat. Right. What is Sherith passionate about? Good question. I think there's so many variables to that, to that answer. But I think what really uh, is the foundation of that is I'm very passionate about people. Mm. Um, and I consider myself to be a people's person. So I enjoy interacting with people, I enjoy engaging with people. Um, and that is why I'm actually a teacher, because I get to interact with people on a, on a daily basis. Um, I enjoy you know, being involved in youth groups um, and meeting new people. So yeah, I think my life is just revolved around. Um, individuals people and so. and and helping people right. you know and um, you know especially when it comes to the youth and I'm so passionate about helping the youth as well and we were talking a lot before the show about you a business owner right. as well, you forgot that part <laughs> Sherith let's tell them about that uh, well that was it's quite a journey um, so yes I started a, a small company or small business rather um, called pink cinnamon um, and that actually happened to start in lockdown. So that happened to be, I think, July, uh, when we just about entered into the lockdown. And I thought, well, why not just start up something? So I started um, going into Facebook, I started up a page. Um, and I kind of love um, anything to do with accessories. Um, I love style, I love fashion, um, particularly my um, field or in my life at the moment, my schedule is quite hectic. So I'm always looking for things that would work for me style-wise. Uh, you know, working with a busy schedule. So I found little things that would help, things like um, scrunchies and slides and headbands and those types of things. So right. I thought, why not um, start up something like that? And how was that journey for you, like just to start? Because as you know, we talk to a lot of um, young people right. on the show, and I'm sure all of them, you know, want to take that leap of, leap of faith. Mm. You're a full-time teacher. You started a company. You bought a home. I mean, <laughs> Sherith, what did you not do? <laughs> what did you not do? So, yeah, Sherith, what was that like for you, you know, um, starting a business, especially during a pandemic? Well, I think, I mean, you, you asked me earlier, you know, there's a lot of young people who would like to, you know, start up a business and so on. Um, I don't think my journey was any different or the, the, the feelings behind it was any different compared to someone else. I mean, there's always that, that um, fear of having to put yourself out there, you know, not knowing if people are going to support, not knowing if what you're going to sell is actually going to sell because the point of it is actually to make money. Um, I've had that same insecurities, I've had that same fears. But I think one of the things that I've learned very, on, very early on as a young person is to literally just take the, sh like, take the shot in the dark. Um, no one can, can kind of um, pin you, uh, you know, against the wall for not trying. Um, and that's what I did. 
Um, it's still definitely a slow progress, but slow progress is still progress nonetheless. 100%. So uh, it's, it's a good journey. I've received a lot of support. What I can say is also that I've discovered that sometimes, you know, family and friends won't always support what you're, you're going after. And I think that has been one of the most in, um, interesting things that I've actually come to learn about that. Mm. Um, and I think that's something that young people are constantly bringing to the forefront in conversations. Where we talk about how family and friends are not supporting one another when it comes to, you know, it's, it's funny because you'll find support from people who don't know you. <laughs> so that's very true. That's definitely something that I've kind of picked from up on. From strangers. So, yeah, that's very yeah. true. And, you know, what's so important about the show and what's been kind of like uh, a, re a repetitive um, topic of discussion right. when, it, when I talk to property investors, mm -hmm. property moguls, first-time homebuyers, they often talk about having a very good support structure. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when you have bought your first home, not just your business, but right. taking that, again, it's another leap of faith, mm -hmm. buying your first home, Again, you needed that support structure. But just before we talk about, you know, investing, your property investing journey, um, you are still a student. You're doing your honors. I am. And you're working. <laughs> yes. And you bought a home. Yes. Like the list, is, it just goes on. And I wanted to talk about that because you spoke about having a really good support structure. Right. You spoke about progress. Slow progress is progress. Right. How do you juggle all of these things? I don't. Oh, okay. I just take the leap of faith. Mm. And I take it as it comes. Yeah. There's really no other answer I can give you. Um, there are times where I feel very, very overwhelmed. There are times I get home and I just feel so drained and exhausted. I, f I even think that as I'm sitting here right now, my body even feels run down. Right. But like I said to you, take it as it comes and mm. you do your best. Mm. And we spoke in depth about taking that leap of faith, but like I'd like you to continue about like, like I said, you have a busy schedule. We've heard about the load you're carrying mm. and working with kids is not easy. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Yeah. Well, I think what really works in my favor is that I'm always scheduling things. So, you know, I obviously sit with a, a daily planner and I schedule, okay, you know, from the, on, your, on this day I've got X, Y, and Z. For this week, this is due. Um, my kids are writing exams at the moment, so I've got to be able to make sure that my exam papers are set up. Um, next week I've got a business appointment. This week I've got to, you know, be with you. So what really helps me is, is, is time management skills. Um, but obviously with time management skills, you know, things you know, don't life always, happens. Life happens. Yeah. So, so some things are unplanned, and um, sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. And of that's course. basically my 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 uh, philosophy: is just to roll with the punches. To be honest with you, I just want to say something. I haven't had a female on the show, so uh, thank wow. you so much that's because <laughs> yeah. And on that note, like let's talk about you know like women in property. Wow. Um, firstly, let me give you some stats. You know, I think about last year they spoke about how young, single mm. women of color mm. are taking over the property market. <laughs> and here you are, a young okay. colored woman in Cape Town, and you're just, you know, you're taking over. And I feel like, tell me what that felt like for you when you signed that OTP, when you, when you held the keys in your hand. Well, I think being able to kind of just, you know, sign on the dotted line and say that this is now officially um, my home, it held such importance for so many reasons. One of them being, um, you know, as an only daughter, I was actually able to buy a house that would, you know, um, house my parents as well. So it's mm -hmm. the three of us in the home at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me to be able to do that, being the first grandchild, being the first child mm -hmm. in my family to be able to buy a house on her own, you know, that speaks so much volume into, to, you know, the, the, the situation itself. Um, but then also the capacity that the women in my family actually have. And so I hope that when I have a daughter one day, you know, that she would be able to do the, same, the thing. same thing. So it becomes a generational thing. And on that note, I also want to speak about generational curses mm. um, as young people that we are facing at the moment. And so we are dealing with that where we deal with the issue of black tax and we are dealing with, you know, having to break those generational curses. 100%. So as I sit here, I sit as a testimony of how I've broken that generational curse. 100%. And so when I have my own kids, they can, they can only do one thing but to follow in those two footsteps. Right. And then also I think as a woman, I mean, come on, I'm 24. I bought this, this house on the verge of being 24. <laughs> it officially became my house just as I, you know, just entered into to, to, uh, my birthday. And so I think that is just as a young person, as a woman, I feel so empowered. I feel like nothing can stop me, mm. you know. Um, so I feel like if I can buy a house at, at this young age, what can I do when I'm, you know, 40? When you're my you age, know? <laughs> you know, when she's... 
my age because I mean hello I yeah. mean that's amazing right that's abs- and I, I love that um, you know you just dropped the bomb and said that you're 24 um, but I love that you know um, you're young you're right you're still studying you're yeah. still and this is something that you it's something you can also when you're gone leave right. for your parents you know or right. something and you're right you're breaking a generational curse you're breaking your daughter your son even right. You know, I know we were on the topic of women in power and stuff, but you know, the men as well, you're leaving, right. you're leaving this legacy. Right. And that's very important, it's the legacy. So I know we're talking about property, but you're just, you, you brought all these <laughs> questions into what legacy does Sherith want to leave? Good question. Integrity we, we, we kind of define as, you know, doing the right thing when no one's looking. And I think what's really important is that I want to be able to leave a legacy where my children understand that whatever they do, you know, they do the right thing. And I think as a young person, I'm also learning to, to, to kind of on that journey, um, always, you know, to, to kind of do the right thing. And sometimes doing the right thing isn't always the easiest thing. 100%. Um, I think one of the other things in terms of legacy I would love to leave is the, the importance of financial stability. Mm. And on that, when I grew up, um, you know, people have this perception, you know, that I had easy, you know, childhood, um, that everything was kind of handed over to me um, and especially when people hear that I'm the only daughter, the only child, people tend to have a certain perception that I was kind of spoiled mm. and that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. You know, there was a time where I slept on boxes when mm. I was younger. There was a time where myself and my parents shared one room together. Mm. There was a time where we had no food at home. And so one of the ways in which I am trying to break that as a generational curse is by now already starting financial stability. Mm -hmm. So that is why that is so important to me as well. Um, And it doesn't come from a place of, you know, never wanting to face the fact that sometimes life just happens to people and that is so true. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's also about them taking responsibility of their finances, which includes their property, which includes, you know, you know other investments in, exactly or, yeah. yeah and i i think yeah i think that's that's part of the legacy i think also um kindness that is something that's very important to me you know being mindful you know mm. of other people being considerate those things are, are, are really important to, to listen me. <laughs> you are speaking my language yeah. mindfulness is so right. important and oh, wow i'm gonna get vulnerable again every week i must cry on the show it's not okay <laughs> So, you know, I want to go back to like our parents, you know, back back in the day and how our parents, it's not that they didn't teach us how to save, yeah. but I feel like there wasn't enough room or enough mm. education, even from their parents' parents, mm. um, that led us and that we could be educated on financial literacy at home. Right. The only education we had about financial literacy was at school mm. and that also is not enough. Right. So let's talk about this. You talk about financial stability and breaking these curses. And you speak so passionately about this because it, to me it sounds like to break these curses, the most important thing is to be financially stable right. and literate. Right. And you know, I was reading an article, I mentioned this in one of my shows, is that yes, coronavirus is a pandemic, but financial illiteracy mm. is another pandemic. Right. The youth are illiterate when it mm. comes to financial stability. Mm. We don't know how. We, we're not getting enough education and that is why we have platforms like this because there are right. people, young adults like the two of us, who are currently sitting in this, this state of how do we save? Mm. So let's talk about you, Shereth. How did you plan on saving up for your first home? Okay, when it comes to the, the savings, specifically when it comes to the house, um, there was no plan. There okay. really was no plan. Um, when I decided to actually purchase the home, what had happened was I was renting before. Uh-huh. And the place that I was renting at, the, I won't give figures, but it was basically more than 10k. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't see how I could spend all this money on you know, paying this rent when I could literally buy a home. Yeah. And the bond was lower than the rent. Right. So it, it, it came to a point to where I just felt like I could not spend this money any further. This is money that could go towards something else. Um, and so I, you know, I began just thinking about it and thinking about it, and then um, I started just starting my my, my journey with, um, you know, wanting to purchase a home. Um, and so what I did was I put a, a bit of, of money away, um, and then I just basically used the deposit that I put down for the rental, mm-hmm. and I used that towards the transfer fees. So right. that was kind of part of my my savings plan. But there was no set time when I said, okay, you know, I aim to buy a house within the next year. I'm going to put money. You know, forward. I think okay. in my journey, 
mm-hmm. that was a mistake that I actually made, mm-hmm. and that is something that when I reflect on my my journey, I wish I had done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as as you were saying, you know, you were speaking about financial literacy and how important it is to actually empower our kids with these skills. I think as a teacher and then also just as a general citizen of South Africa, I think it's so important um, to equip our kids, you know, um, with these skills. And so when I look back at you know my high school career, I wish I took these things more seriously. Yeah. But at the same time, I guess that is where we also see the gap in our education system where we are not empowering um, our kids to, to you know, make purchases on, mm. on homes and things like that. I want to talk, I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little sure. bit here now, right? Okay. Um, you're a teacher, you're an educator, you're a facilitator, right. you're guiding the youth. Mm. Um, I want to ask you a question, mm-hmm. but you talk about how you wish you had taken financial literacy mm. a little bit more seriously. One piece of advice to matriculants, grade 11s, high school students, mm. just before they take that leap of faith and decide what they want to study in life, one piece of advice for them. I think one of, one of the things that I would say is not to be so hard on yourself. Mm. Um, we are not going to have all the answers immediately. Um, one of the things about my personality is that I'm quite the perfectionist. I don't like change. Okay. So as soon as something does not align with my plans, I immediately get very uncomfortable. But one thing that I've had to learn is mm-hmm. that sometimes life just happens. Right. And you cannot control everything. And I'm someone who likes to be in control. I like to be secured. Mm-hmm. I like to know what's happening. I like to you know, um, know what to expect. And sometimes life doesn't give us that. But I think one of the, the, the main pieces of advice that I would say is not to be so hard on yourself and literally just take life as it goes. There's a saying that says, um, um, go with the flow. Yes. And a friend of mine brought this up to me uh, in one conversation and I, I challenged her and I said, yeah, but um, dead fish go with the flow. And I'm not a dead fish. So I'm someone who likes to be in charge. I like to take authority. Yeah. I like to be in the moment. I yeah. like to, you know, um, assert myself. Mm. Um, but I've had to take her advice and actually go with the flow because I've seen that's what works better. You know, if you've ever tried to control something, um, sometimes you'll see it's just it just gets worse. Mm. Um, so I think that's that's really important. And then also take every opportunity. Um, that comes by. Yeah. Um, I, I think sometimes we just, if you were to, to again, the idea of taking a leap of faith, um, there's a lot of things that I'm even going through at the moment um, of decisions I've taken um, where I've had to literally take a leap of faith with having no security at all, with not knowing what's coming around the corner. Mm. But I would never know the blissful experience I could have if, if I didn't take, take. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if it comes to a place where I've maybe made a wrong decision, it's a lesson that I've learned. 100%. And I always have the saying where I always tell myself, I don't have any regrets. Mm. I only have lessons learned. Nice. And so that's kind of my, my philosophy as a young person. So I would say to every young person in matric, you know, in a university, don't take life too seriously, but take the opportunities that come. Yeah. And also don't have any regrets, man. Mm. It's, it's just lessons learned. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. And um, I have three questions here now, and I'm going to try and ask them. <laughs> Firstly, I don't know if it was you that posted this, but you talk about going with the flow, and uh, you talk about how fish, whatever, right? But right. someone posted the other day that dead fish still rise to the top. Wow. Was it you? No, it wasn't No, me. it wasn't me. Someone posted, and they were just like, yeah, cool, You're, you know dead fish float. Right. Right. right, so at the end of the day, yeah, go with the flow, but dead fish still rise to right. the top. So that's amazing. Live a life where that when you leave, your legacy leaves you at the top. Right, right. amazing. That's I love that. Something to okay. quote me. Girl, I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about okay. um, you. You said you're a perfectionist. I am, and um, that you plan everything strategically. Right. Was your home journey, your home buying journey, was it like that? Were you able to? Was everything like pen and everything you wrote? It happened that way. Absolutely not. Anything but. Um, the process itself took about six months just to get through wow. all of that. After um, finding your perfect home? Of, no, the, the process of finding a home, oh, okay. the, you know, affordability and so on. Um, and then also kind of what I was specifically looking for and we kind of wanted something that suited where we were, where we were first at in terms right. of the, you know, our previous home and so that was kind of a, and since I am a perfectionist, and since it's my money that I'm investing, mm. I, I think I have every right to kind of be picky. <laughs> yeah, you know? 100%. Um, and a lot of prayer went into it, you know, mm. a lot of talking to God about it. Um, and finally, I found a home that I, you know, that we kind of all agreed on and something that I was, I was quite happy with. But that process itself took about five to six months in terms of just the entire process. Mm-hmm. We actually just got finished about, I would say, a month ago okay. with the transference and everything. So the house is officially on my name and so on and so nice. forth. So that, that process itself took quite, quite a long time. But in that process, 
I'm telling you, there was a lot of, it was an uphill battle. Yeah. It really isn't, it's not, it's not something that just comes like that. You know, mm. obviously if you have the cash and um, if you, right. you kind of know someone who knows someone who knows someone, sometimes it's just easier that way. But in my experience, I had an amazing real estate agent. Okay. She went above and beyond what she should have. Yeah. Um, there were quite a lot of uncertainties, especially from a financial po point of view, for me at one point, mm -hmm. um, where it kind of looked, you know, I, 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 it was kind of like I was a deer in headlights where I was like, oh, I yeah. don't know what's going on. How yeah, am I going to make this one work? Yeah. Okay, God, what are you going to do now? <laughs> yeah. um, but you know what? Again, leap of faith. I mm. just, there was, a, you know, when you stress, and you're just like overstressed and you're just like, mm, I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to see what God does. I feel <laughs> like your home buying journey was one of the biggest things that made you realize you need to go with the flow. Oh, I'm, that couldn't be like more than the truth, honestly. Yeah. It really was. Um, I think that process itself actually grew me as a person, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was definitely an uphill battle. It was not easy. But it's so worth it at the end, honestly, it's so worth it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, you talk about how you did this for your parents and, yeah. you know, leaving the legacy. What was your biggest reason for actually, like, investing in property? Was it, was it for your parents or, like, was there more reasons behind investing in property? I think there's so many answers to that. Um, I don't think I can give you a, a, a straightforward answer. We have time. I mean, <laughs> we have lots of time. Yeah. I think w what influenced it a lot was because I have such a go get the attitude mm -hmm. and me wanting to to kind of just make uh, not make a name of myself, but yeah, make a name for myself yeah, for yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to be a young person, you know, that bought a home. Mm. You know, that is what we talk about on social media. That is what I see on my news feeds every day. Uh, just the other day, I saw a quote that says, um, we are grinding um, to buy property, not designer. Yes. And so that's something that really speaks to me. It makes an impact on mm. me because I want to be able to do things that set me up for the future. Right. And because I'm someone that thinks very long term, I'm not someone that thinks for just now yeah. I'm always someone who thinks you know what is this going to give me ahead. in the next 10 years mm. what is this going to be like in the next five years and that's how I kind of plan mm. uh, you know that's how I make all my decisions and right. so I knew that even though financially buying this home would probably be the biggest you know one of the best decisions I could ever make but also one of the most challenging decisions I'm, I could ever make I always keep in mind that this is the best decision for the long term right so I know that one day you know when I'm settled and all of those things I don't have to worry about that. Mm. I can spend my money now and design the things if I want to do because I've got the property. Exactly. <laughs> now you can. Right. And so now when I, when I got to work and my colleagues, you know, kind of knew now that I bought the property. So I made this remark to a colleague of mine and I said, first we, we, first we own the house, then we own the block. So that's kind of where I'm moving forward to at the moment. I don't want to <laughs> name drop, but I, um, there are these two famous celebrities. I don't know if you heard the story um, where she was looking to... So they got divorced, right. right? And then you'll probably get who it is. But I, I just can't name drop mm -hmm. on the show. Um, and then um, th they got they were married. They now divorced with like five kids. Right. And then um, he moved out, mm -hmm. and he was like, but he bought the house, right? right? And he was like, um, I want my house. And she was like, the land is mine. Shoo, shoo. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I feel like these are the goals that we need to have in life, right? You're so right. I feel like investing in property because you think long term. Right. And that's something that I feel a lot of young people should kind of invest in is to think about their long term goals, not only with property, but with their life, what they decide to study uh, in the spirit of by the time this airs, it's probably July. But in the spirit of Youth Month, um, right. that's something that I think should be generated these thoughts should be you know spoken amongst the youth and you you you're 24 and you're talking about like these quotes and you're dropping these quotes and you're, you're talking about the conversations you have with your friends who i assume are also your age right. and 24 for me is a very young although we're like like three years apart but still <laughs> i just feel like if i had these chats at this age or even before that a lot of things could shift and like you said the only thing now is to go forward you're 24 but Actually, let me ask you this question. You bought your first home. I did. What does your property portfolio, what does your property journey look like going forward? Is this, or do you want to become like a property investor? I would love to. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely love to. Um, at the moment, it, it's not something that I'm seriously considering at the moment 
but mentally I'm actually looking at buying my own apartments. I would love a penthouse apartment and mm -hmm. I would love to invest in property to kind of open up another avenue of income as well. That's why I speak about financial stability right. and the way to kind of open that up is, you know, to create different um, avenues of income. Mm. Um, so definitely my property journey has, it hasn't ended here. I think it's just a start. Can. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I'm, I think I'm off to a good start though. 100%. <laughs> yes, but you have a home. But 100%. Now that you, you you brought up youth youth month and all yeah. of that, I think especially as a woman, you know, women always talk about how we 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 got to have our own, we've got to have our own back, and we've got to look after ourselves, and this idea of self love, and yeah. you know, I know I know man going to tell me, and, yeah. you know, we, we always have this this mindset, and so what I what I really want to also bring across is it's not just about putting a, a, a Facebook post out there, yeah. it's also about taking the action towards that, mm -hmm. and so that I can literally say. No, I have my own. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. No. As she fixes a jacket, no, no, no. I a have designer my own. jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own. Yeah. So I think that's really important is that as women, we really do look after ourselves. Mm. Um, you know, there's also this idea of, of taxi queens and, you know, always wanting that the, a guy to kind of take care of you and, right. and doing those things. And I think what's really important to me is that I have my own independence. Mm -hmm. And I think if you are going to put any expectation on someone else, there should be something that you bring to the table. 100%. So if I'm expecting my partner to have this amazing mansion, I should also be able to kind Say of, I have you know, my, yeah. come on, like there, sh there should be that equality. Exactly. And so buying the house actually meant quite a bit, mm. you know, that, that idea of kind of, you know, looking after myself, being independent, um, you know, just the idea of general relationships and, and looking after family mm. and, you know, being able to be an example. I know that to a lot of friends, um, this is quite a big deal to them as well because one of them has now made it kind of on top to them. Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that I'm able to inspire them that way and to motivate uh, motivate uh, them that way. Exactly. Um, I've actually received quite a bit of, of, of other young people in my age bracket who are now asking me advice on, on what I did and how I did it and, and, mm. and all these amazing things. So I can definitely see that buying this house was not just about me. Yeah. Again, that idea of mindfulness. There exactly. was a lot of other people that were affected by this. Exactly. And so that's what I love the most about it. So, so this will definitely, I definitely will buy other property, yeah. but this will always be a special one. For 100, because it yeah. taught you so much. Right. And we just spoke about this actually a few weeks ago, the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It's this thing that continues. You did, you did it for yourself, but you taught so many other right. people around you. Yeah. And they're going to go do the same for other people. And, ecosystem, and that's how I feel that we should be not only in our friend circles, in our family circles. Right. In, I mean, you have your own business and you said, some you know some of the the bulk of the support came from people strangers you didn't know yeah. those strangers today can still come to you and be like what was yes. it like buying your first home yes. they can watch the show and be educated yeah. by the knowledge that you had to it's you know i i truly live by the saying that real lived experiences mm -hmm. teach us the most right. and you've lived that journey of yeah. course you had um an agent, a friend, or advice from the internet. These things help us, but you still had to go through the process to actually know what that was like. So just before um, you know, we, we wrap up the show, I wanna ask you about, what, was there one thing you wish you had known? Maybe not one thing. Is there something you wish you knew before you bought your home? I think maybe just the, the process, um, uh, the duration of the process. Um, I think in particular the transfer fees, that was something that I genuinely was not prepared for. Yeah. Um, so obviously the transfer fees is now when the house officially becomes yes. you know, mine in terms of name and so you have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I learned was that the transfer fees depend on how expensive the house is. And yes. <laughs> We learned this the hard no. way, Sherith, we really I, do. <laughs> yeah. I really did, I learned mm. that the hard way. Um, and so I think that's something I would have wanted to, to really um, know about beforehand you know, kind of getting into the process. And by the time I was, that was kind of brought to my attention, it was kind of too late yeah, to, you know. <laughs> so again, like I said, I was like a deer in headlights. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. But you know what? Again, life just has a habit of being bittersweet. Mm -hmm. And somehow things just kind of, you know, right time, right space, right people. Mm -hmm. And really, I, I can honestly say that I could not have bought this house on my own. There was, yeah. There's no way. Mm. There was definitely divine intervention that I give absolute owners to when it wow. comes to that. And so, yeah, that, that's basically my, my, my experience. Oh, sorry, I'm just, <laughs> I'm a deer in headlights right now. Um, because that's so powerful for me, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like there's a lot of things. Yes, you have support right. on this realm, on this level, but there is 
there's more support, yeah. you know, whoever you believe in, whatever the case may be. Um, but I do want to ask you, so, so do you have any regrets, Shira? No. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. I am so over the moon. <laughs> I get to literally get home and then like turn the key to my own house. Mm. And that is so incredible to me. Mm. Um, and you know what, it's, it's, it's such a humbling experience. There's not one part of me that feels arrogant about it. Yeah. Um, or th there isn't even a, like a, some sort of ego response to it. It's literally such a humble experience because I realize that as, as quick as it was given to me, oh, it can also be taken 100%. away. 100%. And so right now in the space that I'm in, now that I have the house, I believe it's my responsibility to now protect what I have oh. because there was divine intervention. Mm. And so it's not something that I take lightly, but it's a responsibility that I now have on my shoulders. And yes, challenging, but I gladly take it on my shoulders. 100%. Because I believe it was given to me because I can handle it. And you've been given so. the strength to right. handle it right now. Right. You know, um, so there's no regrets and I, and I love that. I think that this is a humbling experience for everyone, yeah. anyone who has bought their first home. And just before we close up, you said no regrets and you said that you need the strength to, you know, carry this achievement. Um, but what would you say keeps you motivated every day? Oh, see, you always ask me questions that have multiple <laughs> answers. <laughs> oh, we have time now. <laughs> Look, I think there's, there's so many things. I always believe that um, I live a life of complete purpose. So when I get up in the morning, I have purpose. There's a reason why I get up. Yeah. Um, and it's not limited to the fact that I'm a teacher. You know, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's the fact that, I, like I said earlier to you, I, I owe everything to divine intervention. So mm -hmm. I know that, they, you know that there is a plan for my life and that I've been set apart for something completely different. So I know that there is purpose to, to what I'm doing and why I get up in the morning. So that's my first um, motivation. Mm -hmm. My second motivation is that I have about 500 kids who are under my wing. Yeah. So every morning I, I, I get up literally because, because, because of, of them. them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can't and drop you, the ball. You know what I, what, I, what I believe very strongly is that a le leadership cannot be taught. Mm. Leadership has to be caught. And one has of to the be things, caught? Yes. And one of the things that, and I'll explain why. Yeah. A leader is not defined by, oh, I can manage this really well. Or um, I've got this on my CV, I did this. Yeah. Oh, I can delegate really well. A leader is defined by influence. Mm. And we all have influence. As we are sitting here right now, each person has influence. Mm -hmm. And so, as a teacher, as a leader in my classroom, as a colleague, as a friend, as a role model, I have influence. Mm. So, anytime you have influence, you are able to you know, impact people with the decisions that you make. So, every time I go to my class, I know that I'm influencing these kids. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned about the kids is that you need to earn their respect. And one of the things that, that I've learned is that you have to have credibility in order for them to respect you. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to land this play now sure. with, what I'm, with what I'm getting to. Is that we teachers have the tendency to always want to give advice and you mustn't do this and you mustn't do that and you've got to live a life like this. But we don't show those kids how to do it. So if I'm preaching to my kids about financial stability, I need to give an example of, in my own life yeah. of my financial stability. So they know that Ms. Whaley yeah. has bought a home. Yeah. But what does that influence them to do? Yeah. Now they know Ms. Whaley you know, is financially stable. I need to do the same thing because I, I can also buy a house. Exactly. And so that is the way in which I create, uh, create um, credibility with them to the point where they actually want to l listen to what I have to say. Yeah. And what teachers tend to do is we tend to kind of say things that we know that we think the kids want to listen to. Yeah. Um, but I just have a different kind of way that I, I deal with the learners. Mm -hmm. And that, that's definitely one of the things that motivate me is the fact that I know that I have influence over them and I want to be able to use that for mm -hmm. good. Um, but the goal is always to see them better than me. Of course. You know, so if I can create little mini-me's but better than me, I'd be so happy. And it's, it's not only about breaking the generational curses within right. your own family tree. Right. It's about helping those, exactly. you know. Exactly. And again, it goes back to real lived experiences. Right. You need to live it in, to, in order to teach it. Right. I, I mean, I'm in a, I'm, I never call myself a teacher. I call myself a facilitator mm. because I believe that people come to the space with their own level of education. Right. I facilitate your thinking. I facilitate, right. I guide, them at, right. yeah. meet them where they are and then take it from there. And I, I think um, just before we, we wrap up now, I wanted to ask you, you've already, you know, shared with us how you would uh, teach financial literacy right. to the kids that you teach on a daily basis. But I want you to leave us with something 
you know, just like words of inspiration. You're, you're a really good speaker and I love <laughs> that about you because you come with all these quotes and I like that. So I want you to leave the youth and let's take it because you, I, I want to reiterate the fact that you are juggling so much. Mm. You are still doing your honors. You sit in class I doing do. your own personal assignments I while do. the kids are, am I allowed to say this? On no, camera? of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> While the kids, you know, they're busy with the exams right now, we're right. in that phase and you know, Sherith is sitting in class juggling her own assignments while they're busy doing their assessments. And I mean, you're always posting about your property goals. You're yeah. always posting about dream. The other day you post like an entire thread of yeah. your dream homes. <laughs> yeah. One of them is 27 million, by the way. <laughs> well, there you go. Let's just wait for Sherith to get that 27 mil house. I mean, hello. Um, we can do the interview in that house. <laughs> we can. We're yes. definitely going to do our next interview there. You know, because that's, that's about manifesting. It's about yeah. having these right. goals and this vision. And so, yes, I'd like you to leave us with something extremely like leave us with a few words of um so what does Sherith do to, to get out of that that space of just over you're just feeling overwhelmed and you just want to move on let me let me start off by saying that being busy and being a perfectionist is too like you don't want to be a perfectionist and busy, and busy. at the same time mm. um so at, at the moment in my life sometimes because I am a perfectionist but I'm so busy at, at, at the same time like I said to you life just kind of throws things at you that you cannot control mm. um, and so that creates a lot of frustration for me so there are moments where I feel very demotivated where I feel like I can't carry on anymore where I just feel so drained emotionally mentally physically mm. you must remember that not only am I studying um, you know, I'm working, I've got the business, um, started my own foundation. I'm also a friend. Yeah. You know, I'm also a colleague. I'm, mm. I play all these different roles and all of these roles have different expectations. 100%. So as a human being, we deal with so many expectations and sometimes it's hard to come by. Mm. It's hard for you to, to, to be able to live up to those expectations. Mm. But as I said earlier, it's so important that you don't take life too seriously. We don't all have the answers at, at all times. And mm -hmm. so currently in my life, and I don't know what life holds, nothing is guaranteed in life, I believe. But what I do know is this, and currently in my life, is that it's so important um, to give yourself a break. Mm. There are times where I genuinely, genuinely feel so drained when I get home. There are, I genuinely just want to jump out the car yeah. and just get into bed. And there are days where I, I literally just get home and I get into bed. I have an exam paper due, I have marking due, I have reports due. Um, I've got to do something at home and maybe mm -hmm. I have an extramural activity. I've got to do this, I've got to go to that meeting. I've got to fulfill that responsibility. Oh yes, I promised a learner I was going to help. So there's so many things and when I get into those moments, I just need to have some time to myself. Yeah. So what I do is actually, funny enough, I start mm -hmm. listening to white noise. I know that oh, wow. white noise is actually used for babies. Yeah. But I actually listen to it and it oh, literally it calms me down. Or like raindrops or mm -hmm. something, it literally mm -hmm. calms me down so much. So usually what I do is when I get home, I take two hours for myself. Oh wow. No one, I don't talk to anybody. Yeah. Um, I kind of just mix fiction and, 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 and chill. chill. That's literally Proper. what I do. Yeah. Uh, snacks is also my best friend. <laughs> I Tell love doing it. that, but it literally relaxes my mind. Yeah. Um, I also try to work kind of in the evenings. And the reason why I do that is because no one's awake. Right. And no one has expectations mm. of me. So I can focus that way a lot um, easier. Mm. But that's just kind of like practical um, steps. What you do, yeah. yeah. But I would, I, would, I would say just take a break when you need to. Mm. You know, don't, mental health is a, a, serious, mm. a serious element that we, we're kind of dealing with. And reaching the point of like um, breaking down and like is, is so real. Right. We reach those points very quickly and if we don't take those moments, mm. you know, we can just fail right. and we don't want the system to of fail. Of course. We want to continue. <laughs> yes. Um, and I really, I, I, firstly, I want to I wanna thank you. For, actually, firstly, I want to say congratulations. This is a recent, yes. this is a recent thing, you know, yes. just before your birthday, you got it, mm. you know. This is, it's absolutely amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's, I appreciate it. You know, and I just, <laughs> you know, I wish you the best with your property journey going forth. I honestly do. And what was it, 26 million? The, uh, the, the Dream House. The Dream House, yes, 26 that's my million. Board at the moment. So that's where we'll see you. How, uh, yeah. We need to put a time frame on that. When can we come? Projection. Yeah, let's. You know, in my life, things just happen like this. <laughs> come on. So I, can't, <laughs> so I can't put a time frame to it, but let me tell you, it will be soon. It's going to be soon. It will be soon. And we're going to see you Let there. me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Mark this day. Today is the 24th. Mm -hmm. By the time I am 35, I'll be done paying off that house. Amen. 
absolutely that I is believe it. again manifesting saying stating these things putting it out into the yeah. universe that's what we need that's the energy yeah. we need going forward exactly. and that's to everyone at home as well thank you so much Sherath again thank you so really much. appreciate you taking out the time as I said we are at Saxonburg wine farm we've had amazing food had a great time at this wine farm so do if you're coming to Cape Town head on over here the food is great everything is great to Sherath Welly, thank yes. you so much. Teacher, educator, facilitator, uh, manifesting greatness in life. She's also doing our honors, everything. The plate is full, but she's juggling it, and we're eating good because she is. <laughs> plate is full, but we're eating. So thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in this evening. I've been Estee Classen, and this is the first time home by a show. Go well, take care, and stay warm. Mm -hmm.